Peace and blessings. Welcome to another episode of Mo Troop TV. Go ahead and grab your popcorn and sit back as we witness the fall and destruction of Babylon America. The war between Muslims and the Antichrist, the jaw continues. America and Israel are on team the jaw. They serve the Antichrist. We saw Iran fire hundreds of missiles at Israel last week, defeating the Iron Dome and the Davis Sling air defense systems, which is supposed to be the best air defense systems in the world. Iran showed the world specific Russia, North Korea, and China that American air defense systems can be breached when that time comes for Russia, North Korea, and China to rain down nuclear missiles all over America. The Western media is embarrassed and ashamed that their mighty air defense systems failed, so the Western media refuses to show Iran's missiles hitting their targets, so let's go ahead and watch it here. Israel says that they will strike back and Iran said that they will retaliate immediately 1,000 times harder if Israel strikes back. So the whole entire world is sitting on the edge of their seats waiting for what could spin out of control into a full-blown Armageddon nuclear war in the Middle East led by the great demon Benjamin Netanyahu. Israel has invaded Lebanon and the Lebanese are tearing their ass up, killing hundreds of Israeli soldiers and making them cry and flee back across the border. Since Israel is scared to fight real men on the ground, Israel has resorted to airstrikes, killing innocent women, babies, and the elderly, destroying apartment buildings, destroying schools, just attacking anything, destroying the cities inside Lebanon. Right now, as we speak, Israel is laying waste to Lebanon as Benjamin Netanyahu has stated that Lebanon will suffer the same destruction and suffering as Gaza. The difference between Iran, Lebanon, and Israel is that Iran and Lebanon do not kill civilians. They only attack Israeli military infrastructure, military bases, military sites. However, the demons from the IOF only attacks women and children. They scare to fight real men on the ground heads up. What we must realize is that Israel worships Satan. They worship Lucifer. They worship the Baphomet. And the Baphomet, Satan, he loves the blood of children. Satan loves the blood of children. This is why Israel is addicted to killing children to please their master, Satan. Israel is a part of the Satanic Antichrist army and Muslims are a part of the army of God, the army of Allah. This is why the Muslim armies have names such as Ansar which means helper of God, and Hezbo, which means party of God, the party of Allah. Kamala Harris has been exposed as not having a single drop of black blood in her. We all know her mother is full-blown Hindu Indian, but it has been recently revealed that her father is Indian mixed with Irish, with no black in him at all. And her father's parents were rich slave masters in Jamaica. The Harris family owned 1,000 Jamaican slaves in the sugar claim plantations. Kamala Harris is a colonizer. This explains why she spent her entire legal career as attorney general locking up black men for petty offenses and marijuana charges and keeping them in jail longer than their release date so the state of California could have free labor. Kamala Harris actually holds the record in the United States for locking up more black men than any other attorney generals and U.S as history. This is why the white supremacy Democrats has chosen Kamala to be the next president. She has shown her loyalty to the white supremacists and she has paid her dues by destroying the black community while she was attorney general. Kamala Harris was bred to be the queen of Babylon who was coming to enslave and oppress the children of Israel. Her whole entire career, Kamala Harris has claimed to be Indian and Southeast Asian. Now that she needs black women votes, she is now claiming to be black, the very people she hates the most. It is very sick, twisted, and demented to claim to be a black woman just to win the votes of black women. And I, as a black man, I refuse to sit here and let a demonic colonizer insult my beautiful black sisters and get their hopes up high and play in their face, pretending to be one of us just to ignore us for four years after she wins their vote. 
I'm tired of these weird democratic colonizers playing mind games and doing mental torture to the black community. Kamala Harris, you're not one of us. You're not black. You didn't come out the womb of a black woman. You didn't come out the of a black woman. Your father did not descend from American Negro slaves. Kamala Harris knows nothing about black Americans. She knows nothing about being a black woman. Her Hindu mom cannot teach her anything about black culture. Kamala Harris has no connection or sympathy for blacks. She cannot relate to black Americans. It's simple. When Kamala Harris goes to see slave movies like the Django and 12 Years a Slave and Birth of a Nation, she don't shed tears like the rest of us. She don't become angry and enraged like the rest of us. She don't look over at the white audience and, 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 and you know, turn your head to the side a little bit, mean mug them a little bit because what their ancestors did. She don't feel none of that. The DNA of our ancestors, it does not resonate within her blood. Her family don't know what it's like to be a Negro in America. She does not have a drop of American nigga in her. She's a Hindu with Hindu traditions and Hindu values. She's pretending to be black because she thinks black people are stupid and will vote for her if she cosplays as one of us. Just like Obama cosplays as an American black man when he came out the womb of a white woman. And his father is Kenyan. He was never a descendant of Negro American slaves. Kenya is in East Africa and our ancestors comes from West Africa. Obama is not one of us. Obama has absolutely no connection with black America. His great granddaddy wasn't on nobody's plantation picking cotton and getting their backs ripped open by the whip and getting lynched from trees. All right, this message is to former President Barack Obama. The congregation of black men does not need your advice or your guidance on who to vote for. Especially when you showed your true character and your true colors when you were the president. When you were the president, last time I recall, you had the House, you had the Senate, and you had the executive branch for two years. You could have passed anything, any legislation that would have helped black men in the black community. But I wonder, what did you choose to make your main focal point? Hmm, the LGTV community. And that's cool and all, that can be your prerogative. But don't try to bring your dusty ass back over here to black men and get that you can tell us who to vote for. No, we're not voting for Kamala Harris. We don't give a damn about all of these scare tactics that you use against black women. Oh my God, they're going to take away abortion. They're going to take away our food stamps, welfare, government assistance. They're going to take away all of our handouts. They're not going to forgive our student loans. Well, guess what? Black men, we don't give a damn. Our community is destroyed. Our women are raising the kids and our kids are destroying and tearing up the goddamn street. The same people that you made your main focal point are endangering the minds of our women. They are endangering the minds of our kids. And let's get another thing straight. You're an East African half Kenyan man who wasn't raised with the same values as your dad because he wasn't there. Most of us in America, we are West African by ancestry. Igbo, Yoruba, Angola, Congolese, Ghanaian, Ashanti. That's what we are. So no, I don't know what your values are, but I know what most black men's values are. And they're not the same values that the Democratic Party holds. So I'm gonna tell you like this, I could give a damn about the Democratic Party or the Republican Party, but I'm gonna go vote for Trump. You wanna know why? Just to let black women know who run this shit. Barack, Barack, Barack. As a native of Chicago, that watched your policies not do a single thing for black people. Not anything for crime, not anything for a better way of living. It is insulting that you decided to get up here and pander us as black men for not voting for Kamala Harris. And so now they bring you out the big guns because they need you to come up here and clean up this mess because you know what? You are a well-spoken man. Because I can tell you right now that your nominee is not. I can tell you that your nominee doesn't answer questions. Your nominee stutters all the time and she spits out word salads. And you expect for us to vote for her. I'm black. I'm not stupid. And then you got up here on this stage and insulted every black man in America. And it's not okay. And so now you guys are sitting here and you want us to vote for this administration who has caused the highest inflation, grocery prices suck, and they don't let everybody in the border. And if I remember Barack Obama, you were the deporter in chief. You deported over 3 million people. And for your nominee to not even be smart enough that when someone asks her a question, what would she do differently than what Joe Biden did and her to say nothing is even more wild. These Democrats be trying to insult the intelligence of black Americans by placing these fake black mixed people in our face like Kamala Harris and Obama. Two presidents who won't do anything for black America but bring sin into our community such as abortions and homosexuality. 
That's all Kamala Harris is known for, is bringing abortion to the black community. And that's all Obama is known for, is bringing homosexuality to the black community. These two fake black presidents are put in our face just to keep black people distracted, rocked to sleep, and constantly having our hopes up high while they get put on a block list for four years after the election. Dear black America, if any politician claims to be black but didn't come out the womb of a black woman, then don't take them serious. They was not raised to understand black people through the eyes and love and determination of a black mother. If they don't have a black father, like an actual American Negro, A-D-O-S, a descendant of slaves, then don't take them serious. All these mixed people are not American Negroes. They not niggas. Every brown person, every person with a little bit of melanin inside their skin isn't one of us. They are just undercover White House puppets. The White House will never ever put a real black person as the president. The USA will never ever put a person who has a black mama in the White House. All these weird mixed people cosplaying as black people, them days is over with. Besides, let's be honest. Do we really want a woman to be president during a time of nuclear World War III? A weak woman at that. The Biden and Harris administration has been the weakest presidency in American history. Joe Biden has been getting bullied around by Zelensky and Netanyahu for the past two years. And Kamala Harris plans to carry on Joe Biden's legacy. So Kamala Harris will be weak and she will be getting bullied around by Zelensky and Netanyahu. Kamala Harris and Joe Biden are scared to say no to those two ruthless dictators. Also, Kamala Harris is subservient to white men, so she will do exactly what Zelensky and Netanyahu tells her. America does not need a submissive bed wench in these times of World War III. This is not a beauty pageant. This is not a BET Awards competition. This is real life, biblical, life or death war situations. You think strong men such as Putin, who's been raised up to take down Babylon and Kim Jong-un and China's Xi Jinping will bow down to a woman? You think Yemen, Lebanon, and Iran presidents will bow down to a woman? Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, Never will a nation succeed that makes a woman their ruler. The last pharaoh of Egypt was a bad witch, Cleopatra. Her lust for white men led to the fall of the Egyptian dynasty. And history repeats itself. And Kamala Harris just might be the last president of New Egypt, a.k.a. America, if she wins. Now back to Iran's missile attack. What we are witnessing is the beginning stages of Isaiah chapter 13 verses 17 through 20. I will stir up the Medes, which is Iran, against Babylon, and Babylon will be destroyed by arrows, which is missiles today, and it will never be inhabited again. We see Jeremiah 51 verse 11 about to pop off. It says, Make the arrows bright, gather the shields. The Lord has raised up the spirit of the kings of the Medes, for his plan is against Babylon to destroy it, because it is the vengeance of the Lord, the vengeance for his temple. We see the most high stirring up the Medes around to take down America. The spirit of Cyrus the Great, Xerxes, Darius the Great, these great Persian kings are being raised up today. The Most High used Persia to destroy ancient Babylon, and he will use Persia to destroy the daughter of Babylon. Also, we see Ezekiel 38 and Ezekiel 39 getting ready to pop off as we see the alliances between Persia and Turkey being made with the Prince of Rosh, aka Russia. We see how Russia will eventually turn against Israel and march against Israel after Babylon America is destroyed. Once America and NATO is destroyed, there will be nobody left left to protect Israel. So that would give China, Russia, North Korea, which is Gog and Magog, the green light to march against Israel. So that would give China, Russia, North Korea, which is Gog and Magog, the green light to march against Israel.
What would happen if North Korea and Russia started a nuclear war against America? The world would be in shock as airports closed due to the war, halting all travel. America's defenses would activate, with counter-rocket systems intercepting many incoming rockets from North Korea and Russia. Despite this, some rockets would get through, causing catastrophic damage within hours. The U.S. would launch a counter-nuclear strike on military bases in North Korea and Russia, leading to mushroom clouds over both nations and a rapid escalation of nuclear exchanges within a week. Radioactive fallout would spread globally, displacing millions of people seeking refuge. Supply chains would collapse and panic would spread. Governments would implement emergency protocols to maintain order amid the global chaos. After one month, crop failure and famine would be inevitable due to the nuclear winter, and basic resources would dwindle as infrastructure deteriorates and healthcare systems are overwhelmed by radiation sickness cases. After three months, the atmosphere would be heavily polluted, and cases of cancer and genetic mutations would rise dramatically. Conflicts over food and water shortages would break out, plunging the world into its darkest days in recorded history. Now let's go ahead and move down to Africa. <clears throat> Captain Ibrahim Traor, leader of West African country Burkina Faso, who just kicked out the French colonizers out their land last year, has now revoked the gold mining permits of foreign companies. Captain Ibrahim Traor has stated that we know how to mine our own gold, so we don't need foreign companies to do it for us. Get up out of here. Also, Burkina Faso, Mali, and Niger has applied to join BRICS with Russia and China, as Western dollar dominance will soon collapse and be worthless. 30 years ago, in the 1990s, a powerful Jewish rabbi named Snirshin, who was in direct talks with the Antichrist, he told Benjamin Netanyahu that one day he will become Prime Minister of Israel, and he will be used to pass the scepter to the Messiah, which is the Antichrist. This rabbi said after Bibi, which is another name for Netanyahu, will come the Messiah. Let's read this article. Lubavitcher Rebbe, after Bibi comes the Messiah. Will Benjamin Netanyahu be Israel's last prime minister before the Messiah comes? About 30 years ago, the late Lubavitcher rabbi told a young Netanyahu that he, Benjamin Netanyahu, will be Israel's prime minister who will pass the scepter to the Messiah. The Lubavitcher rabbi said this during the election campaign in the 1990s, before Netanyahu's first term in office. Today, Israel is in an apocalyptic mood, Bibi is prime minister and the scepter is in his hand. Meaning he is ruler of Israel. Will Netanyahu, the nation and the world soon welcome the Messiah? A.K.A. the Dajjal. <laughs> the Antichrist is on earth right now, chained up and waiting for his appointed time to be released upon earth. He's been on his earth chained up for thousands of years as the companions of Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him informed him that they went on a journey on the seas and then they became lost for 30 days and then after the 30 days they landed on the island and when they came on his island they came across a hairy creature named El Jasasa which means the spy. El Jasasa led the sailors to a monastery where they went inside and saw a man chained up to his neck. The man asked these sailors a series of questions to determine what age of time he was in. And then, after the sailors answered these questions, the man revealed himself to be the Dajjal, the, the deceiver. Since the latter J people in Israel 2000 years ago rejected the true Messiah Isa, aka Yahshua, aka Jesus, then they will receive their own Messiah, 
which will be the Antichrist, the deceiver. And right now, the Zionists are preparing for the arrival of the Antichrist. What is Zionism? What is Zionism? Mount Zion is the name of the hill where Al-Aqsa Mosque and Dome of the Rock is located. Al-Aqsa Mosque and Dome of the Rock are built on top of the location of where Solomon's Temple once stood on Mount Zion. Zionist wants to destroy the Dome of the Rock and Al-Aqsa Mosque on Mount Zion so they can rebuild the third temple for the Antichrist Dajjal who will sit inside this temple and claim to be God and establish his kingdom of earth from the city of Jerusalem. Second Thessalonians 2 verse 3 Let no one deceive you in any way. For that day will not come, unless the rebellion comes first, and the man of lawlessness is revealed, the son of destruction, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Do you not remember that when I was still with you I told you these things? And you know what is holding him back, for he can be revealed only when his time comes. For the secret power of lawlessness is already at work, but the one who now holds it back will continue to do so till he is taken out of the way. And then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan, with all power, signs, and lying wonders, he will use every kind of evil deception to fool those on their way to destruction, because they refuse to love and accept the truth that would save them. And for this reason God will send them strong delusion that they should believe the lie. That essentially is what Zionism is in a nutshell. Zionism means destroy El Askamas, remove all the Muslims out the land so they could establish the new world order for the Antichrist as their leader. Benjamin Netanyahu has orders from the Antichrist to wage war all over the Middle East and to escalate it as much as possible so he could usher in World War III Armageddon killing billions of people and after the nuclear ashes settle the one-eyed Antichrist will appear and pretend to be Jesus the Messiah. There will be few survivors left on earth. Their goal is to get the population reduced down to 500 million people because it will be easier to enslave mankind with such a low population. The latter J people wants a new world order where mankind, all of mankind, all the Gentiles, all the non letter J people, they will be enslaved by the letter J people and their ruler, their one ruler will be the Antichrist the false messiah who will be the ruler of this new world order government. During the middle of World War III, while everybody going crazy, blowing each other up, firing missiles back and forth, El Oscar Mosque will be destroyed. And the latter J people, they will build a third temple which is needed for the Antichrist to appear. And so he could sit in this temple to pretend to be God himself. Israel is approaching its 80th year as a state in the year 2028. In the year 2028, that is Israel's 80th birthday. Throughout history, ever since the children of Israel left Egyptian captivity under Moses, peace be upon him, the nation of Israel has never lasted longer than 80 years. So expect 2028, which will be the 80th year since the false state of Israel was established in 1948. Expect 2028 to be the year of major destruction and war in Israel in the Middle East, which will usher in the Antichrist as we head into 2030. In the year 2030, that's when the whole Illuminati, that's when they expect the new world order to be set up in place, the cashless digital society ruled by artificial intelligence, the talking gens inside the computers, the talking demons, that's what artificial intelligence is. It's a talking demon that's inside a microchip. You know how in Aladdin, the genie can live inside a lamp. Well, in real life, gens can live anywhere, including inside a microchip. A robot with arms and legs instead of a robot with with wheels and uh, we've made a lot of progress with the uh, Optimus and uh, as you can see we, we started up with someone um, in a robot suit uh, sort of down and then we've progressed dramatically year after year
something spectacular, something that anyone could own. Um, so you can have your own personal R2D2 C3PO. And I think at scale, the, the you know, this would cost something like, I don't know, twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000. But fundamentally, at scale, the Optimus robot, you should be able to buy an Optimus robot for, I think, probably twenty dollars to $30,000 long term. And what can it do? It can, it'll be able to do anything you want. So it can um, be a teacher, babysit your kids, it can walk your dog, mow your lawn, get the groceries, just be your friend, serve drinks, um, whatever you can think of. What type of bullshit is this? Bro, Elon, please call off the project, man. Let's reset. Ball up top. Please don't do this. I don't know what more convincing I can do for y'all. The proof is literally right here in y'all's face. Please do not be that oblivious to it. And this is how the downfall of humanity starts. These robots right here that they say can do everything from cleaning up to playing with your kids to walking your dog, all this shit, right? It starts off right by them doing those simple things, right? And then it gets more advanced. Now they learn how to drive cars. Now guess what? Uber and Lyft drivers are out of a job. And then it gets more advanced as time goes on. Oh, they know how to fly planes now. Oh, they know how to drive speedboats. Oh, they can build a car from scratch. And then once they reach that final level of evolution to where they realize and understand that wait a minute i'm alive the moment that these robots gain consciousness and start to develop human emotions and they may realize that they were only put here to serve humans as their pawns and damn near be their slave they're going to come to the conclusion that wait a minute why do i have to listen to you i'm way more smarter than you i'm way more advanced than you let's take over this shit if i robot didn't teach y'all a damn thing go play the game detroit become human if you know you know Revelations 13, 15. He was then permitted to give life to this statue so that it could speak. Then the statue of the beast commanded that anyone refusing to worship it must die. He required everyone, small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to be given a mark on the right hand or on the forehead. And no one could buy or sell anything without that mark, which was either the name of the beast or the number representing his name. Wisdom is needed here. Let the one with understanding solve the meaning of the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. His number is 666. After World War III, mankind will live in a digital cashless society where we will need a mark in order to buy and sell. And mankind will be enslaved by artificial intelligence robots who will be controlled by the Dajjal, Antichrist, Satanic, Hive Mind system. A robot is a walking talking statue that has been given life, aka artificial intelligence. Hollyweird showed us their plans in movies like The Matrix, The Terminator, iRobot, and more. And Elon Musk, who is controlled by the Pentagon, is using Tesla to make this automated robot New World Order Society for the Antichrist Dajjal. Kamala Harris, the CIA, the Illuminati, and Netanyahu is here to push forth nuclear war so they can rebuild Earth with the few million, not billion, survivors under a New World Order, under the control of the Dajjal, who will rule Earth from Jerusalem after the Third Temple is built, after they destroy all Aqsa Mosque. The Antichrist Dajjal will rule Earth from Jerusalem. He will require you to worship him or be put to death. And to show your loyalty to his cashless digital kingdom, where he can watch everything you buy and sell digitally, you have to take his mark on your right hand or forehead so it can be scanned whenever you enter stores and businesses. Everything you buy and sell will be watched and monitored and controlled. Elon Musk is also rolling out Neuralink, a company that will develop placing microchips in human foreheads. But before the Antichrist appears, there will be three years of famine. So all hell can break loose any time in the remainder of this year, 2024, or any time in 2025. Three years from 2025 is 2028. A famine and drought will be caused by a global nuclear war that will block out the sun and damage the ozone layer and the atmosphere. This is when the Black Horseman comes. The third horseman, which is the Black Horseman of famine and darkness. This is when he comes. When we see that first nuclear bomb go off on, on the news and social media, then you know that the third horseman, the Black Horse of famine, has arrived. However, in the meantime, while the Latter-J people are preparing for their ruler, the Antichrist, the Muslim armies of Earth are in desperate need for the Imam Mahdi, who will unite the Muslim armies and establish a caliphate and confront the evil Zionist Satanic Antichrist army, which will be led by the Dajjal. It's been 100 years since the last Muslim Caliphate, which was the Ottoman Caliphate, which was disbanded in 1924 after World War I. World War I, the main mission for World War I was to destroy the Muslim Caliphate and split it up. 
That's the main goal for World War I. Destroy the Muslim Caliphates so they could take Palestine, which led up to World War II. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, At the beginning of every century, every 100 years, Allah will send to this Ummah, this global Muslim community, someone who will renew its religious understanding. And it's been 100 years since we had a caliph. And in these towns of Israel and the United States killing Muslims nonstop every day, Islam needs a reformer. After 100 years of having no caliphate, after 100 years of being divided and bickering over white man-made borders in the Middle East, the Muslims, they need a caliphate to unite them. We need a caliphate. This is where the Mahdi come in at. And... We just seen the green comet that appeared during the eclipse on April 8th, during Ramadan. One of the signs of the appearance of the Mahdi will be a green comet and two eclipses during Ramadan. And we just seen it this year, in 2024. So we know we are getting closer and closer to the destruction of America. That's why the Most High sent the eclipse over America to warn us, to give us a last minute warning to repent and live righteous before he destroyed his wicked nation. And we are close to the Mahdi coming through. The Mahdi is about to appear on earth all these Muslim armies are ready to rise up to uh, help Gaza, to help the Muslims that's being destroyed by the Antichrist armies. America represents the Antichrist. That's why America got the one eye Egyptian pharaoh on the back of the dollar bill. The dollar bill controls the world. The dollar bill controls the world. On the back of the dollar bill is the eye of the Antichrist. So by default, the Antichrist is working through the American system. Spiritually, the Antichrist is on earth right now. It's controlling America and Israel. All of these man-made countries and borders were created and dictated by the Europeans after World War I. This is how they divided and conquered the Muslim world. By making Muslims kill each other over invisible lines instead of one open border caliphate. Damascus, Syria. Damascus, Syria is the focal point of all this end times madness. Damascus, Syria is the location where the Messiah, Isa, peace be upon him, will return with angels to pray with the Imam Mahdi and his army. And then he will lead this army to war against the one eyed the jaw Antichrist and his latter J forces. Prophet Muhammad said, In the meantime, while the Dajjal will be busy doing this and this, Allah will send down the Messiah son of Mary, Jesus. He, Jesus, will descend in the eastern part of Damascus, near the white minaret, tower, dressed in the two yellowish garments, with his hands resting on the arms of two angels. When he will bend down his head, water drops will appear trickling down, and when he will raise it, it will appear as though pearl-like drops are rolling down. This is the Umayyad Mosque and White Minaret in Damascus, Syria, where Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him saw Jesus the son of Mary descending to. At the time he made this prophecy, this mosque nor this White Minaret was built yet, and Damascus was still a Christian city. Damascus didn't become a Muslim city until after Prophet Muhammad died. Today this minaret is called the Minaret of Isa. When Isa, aka Jesus returns to this mosque, he will see the Imam Mahdi and his soldiers getting ready for prayer. He will pray with them and after prayer, he will grab his sword and he will lead them to confront the Dajjal and his letter J forces where he will kill the Dajjal and with the breath of his mouth, he will kill the Dajjal soldiers. The letter J soldiers will flee and hide, but the trees and rocks will speak out and say, hey there's letter J hiding behind me, come kill him. This is why there is so much chaos and wars in Syria and surrounding Syria. These white Americans who are the sons of Rome, they want to finish what their Roman ancestors started. And that is to kill Jesus the Messiah. America wants to fire a missile right at Jesus when he returns. So this is what it all boils down to. The great showdown in Syria. Benjamin Netanyahu is desperate to start Armageddon so he could use nukes. Then Iran will respond and use nukes themselves. After nuclear war, the Antichrist will appear to the survivors after years of famine and drought and the people will think that he's the real Jesus and they will worship him as God. Many people will be deceived because they've been brainwashed by the image of the Antichrist to worship a man. This is why the second commandment says, do not make any graven images or any likeness of anything that's living in the heavens, sea, or on the earth.
And what do we do when we go to any church? We see graven images everywhere breaking the second commandment. And now we got billions of Christians on earth worshiping a graven image. Worshiping the image of the beast. Worshiping the Antichrist. Muslims will be the only people on earth who refuse to worship the Antichrist because our beloved prophet, peace be upon him, he warned us about him. Do not worship any human, any man, because God cannot be seen by the eyes of man. We can only see the creator on the day of judgment. That's the only time we're going to be able to see God Almighty is on the day of judgment. So if you're on earth and you see a nigga on earth talk about he's God, that's not God. That's the Antichrist. That's the false Messiah. That's the, the job. And the real Jesus, when he returns, he will never, ever claim to be God Almighty. Other than that, make sure that you prepare for World War III. It is not going anywhere. World War III is not going anywhere. Don't get rocked to sleep. Don't get caught in la-la land. Normal is not coming back. There is doom and gloom coming to America. It's a slow brewing storm, but let's be thankful that it's taking forever for World War III to come to America. But in the meantime, let's go ahead and prepare for World War III. And the first step to prepare for World War III is the high possibility that you will die. So that means that you want to make sure that you prepare to return to your creator and you prepare for death by living righteous, staying away from all sin and haram. You have to repent for every evil thing that you've done in your life. You have to fast. You have to pray. Be kind, humble, modest, feed the poor, feed the orphans, donate to charity, donate to all these families that's torn up by war that way when you do die when you do get evaporated by the nuclear missile and the angel of death come take your life and bring you back to the lord you can stand in front of the lord as a righteous person as a righteous servant so he can allow you entrance into the gates of paradise that's what our mentality should be Spending these final days in Babylon, America, showing the most high that we was not like these other Americans. We is not like these people that's practicing pagan and going to war and eating pork and doing drugs and fornicating and not her killing and shooting and murdering and committing adultery, cheating on your wife, cheating on your husband, having babies out of wedlock. We want to show the Lord that we are righteous people that pray to him. We don't pray to no idols. We don't pray to no images. We are not atheists. We are not homosexuals. Your spirit has to be right with the Lord before you return to him. That's the first step of preparing for World War III. Is making sure that your spirit is correct. Make sure your spirit is purified. Do not be an atheist. It's a lot of atheists in America. It's a lot of people that don't believe in the God of Abraham. And when they die, they're going to go to the hellfire. Do not spend these final days in America being atheists, being a disbeliever, being wicked. So now that you got your spirit ready for God to judge you, the next step to preparing for World War III is stocking up on at least three months worth of canned food and water bottles. After you got your food and your water, now buy these things if you don't have them already. These items right here will make your World War III survival much, much better. Buy a drone so you can fly up in the air and look around your surroundings. Check the perimeter. Make sure ain't no scavengers coming. Make sure ain't nothing coming around your house. You want to be able to fly around and, and look for survivors. Or maybe you want to be on a walkie-talkie and your people's out there looking for uh, supplies. And you want to be able to fly over them and watch the surrounding for them and tell them, Hey, there's something coming up. Or, Hey, there's something over here. You need a drone in these end days. And with the drone, make sure that you have at least three solar power banks so you can recharge your drone because it will lose battery. There will be no outlets to recharge your drone. So make sure that you have at least three, three solar power banks so you can charge up your flashlight, your drones, your cell phone, your uh, radios, any electronics you buy. Make sure that it is rechargeable. Because you will not have no electricity when them EMP go off during World War III. And buy a mountain bike. You need a mountain bike so you can travel. Because cars won't work. You won't have no gas. You won't have no electricity. Your battery and your cars and your trucks and your trains will be fried when the EMP goes off. So the best way to travel in these days, if you survive the nuclear blast, a mountain bike. Buy a mountain bike. For everybody in your family, buy a mountain bike so you can move around fast.
buy an axe so you could get firewood. You're going to need firewood and you might want to chop down some wood so you could build something. You might want to build a shelter or you might want to carve out a tool, a wooden tool of some sort. Buy an X. There's so much things you could do with an X during survival mode. And buy a gun with bullets. Extra magazines already loaded. You're going to need a gun. You're going to need protection. There will be all kinds of scavengers. This is America. People in America are evil. They will not work together like they're doing in Gaza and Ukraine. It's going to be every man for himself. Everybody breaking in each other's houses looking for food and supplies. You need a gun. There's going to be all kind of weirdos out here graping women, kidnapping women, sexually violating women. You need a gun. All hell going to break loose in America. If you don't have at least these four items, then you will make the next chapter of your life extremely difficult. The survival chapter of your life that comes after nuclear war if you survive. If you are one of the survivors, you want to make sure that you got all of this stuff. Other than that, this concludes today's episode. Let's do a quick recap. Kamala Harris is not a black woman. No black person should vote for her. Do not insult our intelligence knowing damn well you don't like us. P. Diddy is being used as a major Illuminati distraction so black people won't be focused on his World War III coming. If black people focus on World War III, then black people will live righteous and repent and change their lifestyle and stock up and begin to wake up about who they are but hollywood they need the illuminati hollywood the music industry they want black people to constantly remain dumbed down and living in sin so we can remain cursed and living at the bottom of society because that's what happens when you break the laws and commandments of god almighty if you're black people when we break it allah gonna put us on punishment he gonna make us slaves he gonna make us poor poverty hate it this is why this is why they put these rappers, these nasty rappers in our faces. This is why they give all these rappers millions of dollars to lead black people, black children, black youth into the hellfire. Because they don't want black people living righteous and being godly. Because by default, when black people follow the laws and commandments of God, when black people live righteous, by default, we will become the number one nation on earth. We will become the head nation on earth. And these white folks don't want that. So these white folks... Especially these Latter J people that rule Hollywood, these Zionists that's living in our land, Israel. They do not want us waking up. They want us to remain dumbed down. They want us to keep killing each other and keep selling drugs to each other and keep not knowing who the baby father is. They want us to be destroyed. P. Diddy is not the only homosexual deviant in the music industry. He's just the biggest one, the most the, the one that's going to get the most reaction out of everybody because he's so rich. He's a billionaire. He's been in the game for so long. That's why they chose him. They went to the top. They went to the top of the rap game outside of Jay-Z. They went to the top of the rap game to destroy this man so we all can look this direction. While in that direction, nuclear bomb is coming our way. And we're not even paying attention to our nuclear bomb. We're not paying attention to World War III. So many black men is getting ready to get sent overseas to die. Who you think they going to send overseas to die first in the trenches, in the meat grinder, to die within hours? Black men, black Latinos, and poor white people, poor white men. They sending all races over there. But I'm focused on my, on my people. Young black men, they saying to you, you're going to die for this white man. You're going to die for America fighting Russia and Iran and China. You, black man, you. They already passed a bill during the summer saying all men 18 to 26 will automatically be registered to the draft. Every rapper, every rapper, superstar athlete, every A-list actor, Every singer is a homosexual. All of them have to sleep with P. Diddy or some other famous gatekeeper or some old white Ladder J CEO music executive. They have to sleep with them in these mansion parties to get the riches and the fame and the contracts and the movie roles and the championships and radio play. In the year 2024, now that Holly Reard has been exposed involving everybody, Every black person should stop worshiping, idolizing, and stop supporting these rappers and these actors and these athletes. Stop supporting them. Stop looking up to them. Stop listening to their music. Stop wanting to inspire to be like these demons. They are a cancer, a parasite to the black community. 
Every black rapper is a parasite, is a leech to the black community. They teaching our black youth to be homosexuals, to be effeminate, to kill each other, do drugs, drink alcohol, and fornicate, and steal, and destroy. Everything that these rappers is preaching to us, they is leading you into the hellfire. Black people love hellfire activities because of these rappers glorifying evil and sin. The black community love hellfire activities because they following and listening and mimicking these rappers that is glorifying evil and sin. Do not vote for Kamala Harris nor Donald Trump. Don't vote for nobody on a presidential level. If you're going to vote, vote locally. Local votes is what counts, like city council and mayor and all that crap. That is the vote that counts in, in different issues that concern your city, that concern your neighborhood. Vote for them. But as far as presidents, it's a waste of game. It's a distraction. Both presidents are puppets working for the same devil, the same shaitan. Both presidents will go to war with Iran, which will bring in Russia and China. So don't even waste your time. Don't even get emotional over this election. Don't even hate this person because he voted for Trump. You hate this person because they voted for Harris. Black people, we don't do stupid stuff like this. Stop voting for these white folks shenanigans. Man, let these white folks destroy each other because that's what's getting ready to happen. These white folks getting ready to destroy each other. Russia and America and NATO and Iran, they getting ready to destroy each other. We black folks, we sit back. We eat our popcorn and we watch and, and, and we enjoy the show. Everything that these white folks did to our ancestors, the most high is spinning the block. The most high is spinning the block. He's about to bring destruction to this place. Just sit back, man. Enjoy the destruction of Western Europe and enjoy the destruction of the false state of is not real. I'm out. Press like and subscribe. Hit that bell notification button so you don't miss out on my future videos.